Good afternoon, Grade 11s. Welcome to today's LO lesson. Right. To move the slides. All right, here we go. On the screen now, my details. My name is Bilen Lidziga and I am your LO teacher for the duration of the lockdown. My name is Bilen Lidziga and on the screen is my email address. Lizika Bileng at yahoo.com. So Lizika is my surname, Bileng is my name, and that is in small letters at yahoo.com. So you can email me with regards to anything that you want to know concerning LO. So anything that you want to speak to me about with regards to LO, you're welcome to email me. So today we're still carrying on with careers and career options. And yesterday we spoke about application letters, about your CVs and how you can apply advertisements. So today we're carrying on with Unit 2 and it's Chapter 13, Unit 2, more competencies, so more things, abilities and ethics that will assist in securing a job and developing a career. Like I said yesterday, we were on about CVs and how we can find jobs and advertisements. So today we're still carrying on with helping you to know how you can get a job and how you can develop your career. So today we're going to do that by teaching you how to prepare for typical questions. And these are questions that, can, that you can get during interviews. So as you know, Getting a job will be based not only on your qualifications or your metric certificate or your experience, but a lot of interviews will, will decide whether you get a job or not. So how you perform during your interviews is also very important. So your performance will be about your how you're, how you're dressed and most importantly, how you answer questions. So we're going to look through the kinds of questions that you can get and we're going to try to get you to answer those questions in a professional manner and in a way that will be able to get you the job. So the lesson objective for today is just that, that you must know how to prepare for typical questions for your interview. So remember, this is not far-fetched. You can start doing interviews right now. You can get jobs during your holidays or you can work for NGOs and be part of community organizations and projects. And all of that experience will help you one day once you're finished with matric, it will help you to, to get a job much more easier. You won't have to start with no experience. You will have experience. So you can take part and be part of organizations and be in, an employee and learn uh, whilst you're studying. So let us start with the lesson for today. So on the first slide is preparation for typical questions. So these are more conversational questions. These are questions where you just need to relax and you need to answer them in the most comfortable manner that you can. So introductory questions. So did you find our office easily? Would you like something to drink? So this is more to ease you up. So it's like an icebreaker is to get you to be comfortable and to get you to not, just to calm your nerves down. So that is an introductory question. Maybe being asked, um, did you find our offices easily? And would you like something to drink if you want a glass of water? If you are nervous, then you can get yourself, just ask for a glass of water so that you can calm down. So, 
that would be an easy one. So I think you would be able to explain whether you found the office easy or not. And then self-awareness questions. So uh, a question of self-awareness would be like, describe yourself in 10 words or what are your strengths and weaknesses? So before you go to any interview, you must be able to know how to describe yourself. This means you need to know yourself. So these are your qualities. Maybe I am a happy person. I'm a jolly person. I'm humble. I'm energetic. Uh, those are words that you could describe yourself with. I'm hardworking. I'm self-motivated. And then what are your strengths and weaknesses? So you'll tell them that maybe you're always on time, that you always go the extra mile. So those are strengths. And then weaknesses, you'll tell them whatever your weakness would be. So yes. And then interest, what do you do in your free time? So maybe some people will write hobbies. So it or you love exercising, bodybuilding, or you love walking your dog or whatever you like doing during your free time. That is what you, you one of the things that you will also have to prepare. How do you think this job fits your interests? So maybe if you're applying for a job at the zoo and maybe during your free time or your in your free time will obviously show your interest. So maybe you walk your dogs or you take your dog for a wash or you go to the SPCA and you help out during your free time. So that is something that is going to speak to the job that you're doing, looking for a job at the zoo. Maybe they will see that you are a person that loves animals even during your free time. You take your time to go and take care of stray animals or animals that are sickly so this will this will make sure that you get hired more easily or it will put you at an advantage so let's say you're applying for nursing or some something in the medical sciences maybe you'll tell them during your extra time you go to help out at the orphanage or you go to help out at um at an old age home so that is something that that you, you that will fit in with you being applying for a job in the medical industry so they'll see that this person actually has an interest in helping out people that aren't able to take care of themselves so they'll be more suitable to fit in with our job in the medical sector so that is that will even tell you maybe give you an idea of how you spend your time so instead of spending your time watching tv or whatever if you know that you want to be a doctor you might want to spend some time volunteering in an ngo that goes to take care of people in their homes or whatever so that you can have the hours and the experience with interacting with people and you might learn something on the job and as you work with the nurses and then this will put you at an advantage when you apply for a job in the sector so yes education how did your studies prepare you for your career this is the fourth bullet point so here we are how did your studies prepare you for your career so what you studied must speak to your job so maybe you studied education like me. I have a PGCE. So when I'm asked in an interview, how did your studies prepare you for your career? I'll say that I did a PGCE. I learned methodology. I learned child psychology. I learned anything, the theory that works hand in hand with the subject that I'm teaching. So basically that is how my studies have prepared me for teaching. So you will do whatever, you will say whatever that you've learned, maybe your qualification is, maybe if you are an engineer, you'll say how your engineering degree has prepared you for a 
career in engineering, whether it's electrical or chemical. And then did you participate in other activities whilst you were studying? That is also important. So let's say when I was at varsity, I played some soccer, I played lady soccer. I also did something with church. I joined the school SCA and I also did some, I volunteered as a teacher in a program where we were teaching at a school for disadvantaged people, which was a bit maybe an hour from our university. So that is something that speaks to what I'm doing today. So having volunteered as a teacher at that time whilst I was studying speaks to what I'm doing now, because right now I'm a teacher. And then maybe playing soccer speaks to what I'm doing now because even when I am teaching if they ask for a teacher who's going to help out with the sports then I'll help out with the ladies football and then if there's a need for a Christian association movement in the school someone to help out with that regards then I'm also available in that area so everything that you do maybe can speak to what you're going to do in the future so you're going to say how those things so your education and your the activities that you did maybe can speak how they can put you in an advantage how they make you relevant for the job that you're that you're doing and then salary which is the last bullet point what have you been earning up till now so you're going to be honest, if you were getting 4,000 Rand, you're going to tell them that you, you were getting 4,000 Rand. If you're being paid a stipend, maybe something for transport and maybe something for you to eat, maybe it's like 1,200, 1,005, you're going to tell them. And then what would you like to earn? That is a very important question. A lot question a lot of companies do ask you what you would like to learn I was asked that question when I was uh, applying for an internship so what you do is you need to be honest you need to uh, take into into consideration what your needs are and what the cost of you keeping the actual job and carrying out the actual job is. For instance, it's in Joburg. So what I would need is I need a place to stay in Joburg. How much is a flat in Joburg? I'd need transport maybe to get from the flat to the job. And then I'd need food to stay there. I'd need electricity. So I'm obviously not gonna ask for a thousand rand when I know that I need a place to stay. So as much as you're considering that you're only an intern or you're only a junior employee, but then you also need to make sure that you get paid enough so that you can do the actual job. If you need to take work home, then you will need to be able to cover costs like data and whatever. So you need to make sure that you cover yourself up and ask for enough money to be able to help you to carry on with the job. And then carrying on with typical questions. So we're on to a new slide and the first bullet point is career motivation. So you might just be asked or a lot of times you can be asked, why did you apply for this job? So a lot of us are unemployed. So you can tell them that you need the job because you're unemployed. You can tell them that you need the job so that you can get experience in that area or that you're passionate about whatever you're doing. You want to make a difference. You want to help with development or you want to provide expertise, knowledge. So let's say you are um an engineer maybe a civil engineer and maybe it's a construction company what you tell them is that you're providing expert knowledge or specialized knowledge and you would like to make sure that you are an asset to the company by giving them all the knowledge that 
that you need. So how are you planning to develop your career is another question that you might get. So for me, maybe I'll say that I'm planning on studying further so that I can gain more expert knowledge so that I can become a specialist in my area. So maybe I'll go study an honors or a master's in education, whether it's in curriculum studies or specialized or what is it um special care or special needs so that is how i develop myself maybe taking workshops or maybe attending extra meetings and going the extra mile shadowing other managers that is how you can develop your career so those are questions that you also need to answer and then there are questions on interpersonal skills how do you usually contribute to group decision making so maybe you can be part of brainstorming sessions maybe you can put you can make presentations or maybe you can uh, write letters or write proposals, whatever, however you think you're going to contribute to group decision making, whatever fits your personality. Maybe you're good at writing things down, that's when you write a proposal. If you're good with presenting, you'll make a presentation. If you want to do it in a group session where you have a discussion with everyone and see what everyone's opinion is and exchange ideas that's where you'll say you'll do it in a brainstorming session and then yeah maybe you can approach your boss and to just go to his office ask to meet him or your department head and then just speak to them about your 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 suggestion and then knowledge the third bullet point knowledge of the position or organization so this is about knowing about the organization or the company that you have applied for where they are giving you the interview why do you want to work for us so you must know why you want to work for the company whatever your reason is for instance why I want to work for Africa Teen Gigs STEM Digital Lockdown School is so that I can help South African children not fall behind with their schoolwork. I want to make a difference as a teacher. And I love teaching. I have passion for children. I don't want to see any child be left behind. And I also want to grow together with everyone else and make sure that. I make a difference during the pandemic, you know, put my hand into making South Africa go through this and maybe go over to the next side more quicker. So values, how do you, okay, there, what, what do you know about the organization? Yes, you must also do your research before you go into your interview. You must research about the company, institution, organization. You must know more about it. So you might have to know the product that they're selling. If it's a skincare product, you must know what their target market is. Maybe they, um, the target market is young adults, maybe from 21 to 35 year olds. Uh, maybe they are targeting people with acne or skin problems. So maybe it's not a beauty product, it's a medical product. You need to know things like that. And maybe you need to know um, whether they are targeting people, the elite people with good jobs maybe who are higher class or upper middle class or maybe they're targeting lower lower income groups so meaning you'll know that they're not going to price their goods at a very high price so you need to know more about the, the organization you need to know more about their ethics their principles what they stand for so yes, you need to research and use your search engines, whether it's Google or 
Yahoo, Amazon, whatever you use, just look up information about the organization. And then value, values, how do you feel about working overtime? These are things that you need to consider whilst you're applying and when you read up on the ad and see what they want. So when you go into your interview, you will have thoughts out before whether you want to work during holidays, whether you want to work during the weekends, if you're a religious person, whether you want to work on a Saturday or on a Sunday. So whether you want to work during your fastings, if you don't mind doing that, whether you want to work over Christmas or Ramadan, whatever you feel. So you need to tell them maybe if you can't come to work if you can't stay at work late, maybe you've got children or you've got to take care of your grandmother. So you can't uh, maybe knock off at eight o'clock or at seven o'clock, you have to go home at five if it's a nine to five. So basically you need to tell them how you feel about the working arrangements, working overtime. So you need to tell them, be ready to answer questions about that because they need to know. And don't, don't not be honest with them because once you sign a job contract and then they ask you to start uh, working late and then now you have excuses and now you want to tell them whatever you want to tell them that uh, you're taking care of your aunt or you're taking care of your niece. So you need to be honest during the day of the interview about what you're willing to do, how far you're willing to go and what you're not willing to do. And then ethics and ethical behavior, transparency and accountability. Many wise African proverbs give good advice about ethical behavior. The, the, the most um, common principle, the most famous one, maybe would be Ubuntu, Motuki Motukabatu. That is to say that I am because you are. Let's help each other out. So you're not going to be selfish in the work place when someone needs help you're going to help them if you're at the help desk or a receptionist you're going to be friendly you're going to be helpful when someone needs something you're going to reach out so that is an african proverb that you that can help you with ethics in the in the workplace that could influence how you work your your behavior in the workplace so ethics, second bullet point, ethics in the workplace refers to the moral principles. The moral principles, value and rules for good, fair and correct behavior at work. Every workplace requires you to behave ethically. So every workplace will have rules on their ethics. For instance, if you're working for an auditing company, auditing tax company, then you can't like steal money, like stealing or theft or crime is like, it's a no-no, you can't steal. Immediately when you're part of fraud or whatever, then you can't work for them if you have a criminal offense. Um of stealing money or money laundering you can't work for them so you need to be honest with regards to your finances even maybe when you're a teacher you can't be a child offender you can't have abused a child so it is like your duty to take care of a child as if they are your own child during school uh, hours so you can't like act and ethically during school hours or after school hours with a learner. So each and every workplace will have its own rules with regards to ethics and it will depend on what their core product is. For instance, I made an example with an accounting firm. They're dealing with money. They obviously don't want someone who's going to be dishonest with money. And then if you are a teacher, you have to be 
ethical about how you treat children. You, you don't want to compromise children. And then if you are maybe a nurse, you need to maybe also not be abusive. You need to maybe sign contracts if you're a doctor about maybe giving the right medication and just being sober, maybe making the right decisions. So every workplace will have its own ethics. Ethical behavior means having a good character, personality, being honest. We just spoke about honesty. Being responsible, meaning doing your job. No one has to run around trying to find you looking for your submissions, acting in a good way and being honest and responsible. Also knowing the difference between right and wrong and then choosing to do the right thing. So if someone says, okay, we have an account where there's a client paying 2 million rand. Even if we take 100,000 rand, the company is not going to notice because there are lots of companies who are coming to do tax with us and they are all paying 2 million rand. So the company is not going to be able to trace that we're the ones who withdrew from the account. You know that that is wrong. So it is a good and responsible and an honest thing to be able to choose the right thing and not do it, not do what you're being offered. So you must be able to choose to do the right thing when you are faced with that question, when you're faced with that decision of whether you are going to do something that is unethical, that you're not supposed to do or not, you need to make the correct decision. And then transparency. Transparency in the workplace means open and honest communication and not hiding information. So this means that you're going to be honest about everything and then you're not going to hide information. For instance, yes, uh, in the, we'll use the auditing and commerce um, uh, workplaces still so you're going to be honest about each and every amount of cash or money that goes through your hands if you're being sent to a company to go do tax you need to be honest about what that the, what the company receives and how much profit they're making you don't want to be involved in um, a situation where you have misrepresented the company's tax status or whatever uh, you need to be honest at all times and not hide information let's say you are a policeman you and information is needed for a case so you need to be honest and not commit the crime of withholding evidence from the state so this is transparency and then accountability in the workplace means that everyone is responsible for the tasks that they are assigned so this is your job description you have been assigned work and you must do the work that you have been given on time and you must give the work in the deadline that you've been given. You take responsibility for doing your work properly and taking penalty if you don't do it properly. So some companies have merit systems where if you complete your job, they'll give you merit. And then if you don't do your job, then you lose points. And maybe at the end of the year when they give out their bonus or their incentives 13th check, then they'll see who qualifies to get a 13th check. Then when they look at the scoreboard and check who didn't do their work on time, who made their submissions on time, who made their deadlines on time, who made an, an extra effort and who made sure that the, the company turns over more profit, then they'll see who gets a bonus or not. So basically that would be accountability. 
So a whistleblower is a person who reports an ethical, this is the third bullet point. A whistleblower is a person who reports an ethical, dishonest or corrupt behavior. So an ethical would be someone who goes against the ethics, obviously. Dishonest would be someone who steals from the company. If even if it's a food company and maybe you're stealing some of the ingredients, let's say it's a burger company and you decide to go and steal the tomatoes or the buns or whatever so that you can sell at your home privately and make extra money on the side because they they're not gonna be able to see right now when they count the stock that things are missing or corrupt behavior and that maybe would be when you're supposed to hire someone maybe you hire your relative or and not advertise the post and hire give everyone an equal opportunity to work for the company so corrupt behavior would be stealing misrepresenting information and so a whistleblower would be someone who tells the company management police anyone of any dishonesty or corrupt or unethical behavior that they see a whistleblower is usually ethical and wants to make sure that there is no dishonesty in the workplace. So this would be someone that holds the workplace ethics in high esteem and who is very interested in keeping the integrity of the firm. So yes, and then as your activity, Name the ethics and ethical behavior that would have to dis that you would have to display at any organization. So this is just an activity to check your understanding, and this is for yourself. It's not something that I am going to check. So yes, today's lesson was very short. It is a Friday, so. Next week, we'll be doing chapter 13 and we are going to continue. It is on a Monday. We're going to continue with unit two. So please remember that this is my email address. You can contact me on my email address, litigabling at yahoo.com. And then... For more information, you can also contact Africa Teen Geeks. And then remember to sign up for the newsletter so that you can be able to receive the links when they change. And then also follow Africa Teen Geeks at Africa Teen Geeks on all social media platforms. And that is where you can get us. So is there anyone that has a question before we leave? If you have a question, you can ask with regards to anything that we learned about today. Anyone with a question? Anyone with a question? Nobody? Okay, thank you very much. And goodbye. See you on Monday. Thank you.